կարող է կարտեմ ինգրստվակցեմ չան։ Ոկ, իմ էքրանը տեստում է չէ։ Սավ սկսենք բարեք ձեզ ամնս հայք է սպահին ես բարսինունայի ոպել Հաբրահամասան ու միջև ստեղ կալը երկար տարներ մեր կենտրոնական բանքում է մեղել Հայաստանի ու նաև ժամնակար ժամանակ ամերիկյանում ամերիկյան համասան ու մեկանում էր իկսկուրսը տպետ։ Ունենալ եմ երկու լեկթյած ես հետ, լեկթյանները հիմնականում պանել դատաների մասին է, ու ինչպես աշխատեր պանել դատաների հետ և ինչ մոդելներ կիրարել պանել դատաներ հետ։ Եթե կրետակ կրվեք, դասագր Եկանոմետրիքսի մակարդակը խմբում տարբեր է և ինքը ընդրգրադույեք լվել է։ Ես տեկստուկեր բաղական ին ադվանս մակարդակի տեկստուկեր են, դրա համար լեկթյանները սպործել եմ կազմեր մեծ, որ հնարույնը սպարս լինի ու հաս� Արակ պլանի մասին այսօր ունենանք կարջ ինչրոդակշն, ունենանք հիմնական բանետատամոդելներ, իսկ մեզ դասին ուրեմը դասի մի մասը կանցվենք ավելի ադվանս բանետատամոդելներին, այն ու հետև ձեզ պրակցիքորեն � ոգտագործեն ստատա ծրագիրը, գիտեմ, որ արդեն ստատա գիտեք, բոլորը, ու միրջ դարսի վերջում պոքրիկ կվիս կունենա, դրա համար ես խնձեր եմ դուսեին, որ ձեզ նյատ պեպր կա տարածի, հույսունեմ այս մեկ շապատ � հարցերը շատ հեշտ են լինելու, նույնիսկ եթե պեյպրը դիշվար լինի կարթան, հարցերը բաղկանին հեշտ են լինելու և համուսված են ոլորդեր կարակ է հարցերը առակ պատասխում է։ Մեկցայիս մնացած մասը անգլերը նա � Եթե հարցեր կուզենակտակ հայրենով, հանքի չկա, որձեք հայրենով բացատեր։ Ոկ է։ Սո, ես։ Հարց կար, հա։ Կարող եք այդեպ, կարող եք ծանկաց ես պայն ընթատել, մայցերյալը բաղականի բարխալի and uh, the rest of the class will be in English. So uh, as we are going to study in panel data, which means that you already know a lot of things in econometrics. And for my lectures, uh, I, I will assume that you know several concepts and I will not go to, be, to explain them. If not, this is the very good time to, to clarify. So I want to ask a few things uh, to you about the econometrics. I want to understand uh, whether you know this, uh, these uh, concepts, because for the rest of my class, I will assume that you perfectly know, okay? So first thing I want uh, to ask whether you know what is estimator and estimate. Can anyone explain this? Yes, because they were like Chandler Balkan active, Միմիսկ եթե համոզվաշ չեք, պործեք բացատրել, ես ինարկ է դո ավերի այդ մայամասը բացատրել։ Աստիմետ երևի կաղ ենք հասկանալ ինչ-որ չապման, եթե ինչ-որ պան ենք ուսումնասիրում, ինչ-որ չապումներ ենք ու կանխատեսու You know, the task of econometrics is to, to take some data and try to estimate uh, the economic relationships in order to answer the question of how much. So we know that, let's say, variable X affects on variable Y from the theory, from the economics, but we don't know how much. So 
with econometrics, we are going to answer this question of how much. And estimate is this number that shows how much variable X affects on variable Y, okay? And <clears throat> estimator is just a formula, it's just a tool that will give you, uh, give you this number, okay? So you will use your data, you will put it in your estimator and you will get the, 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 this measure of how much, okay? By the way, I will say economic theory, economic relationship, but econometrics can be also applied to any field. But as I am economist, I will use economics, okay? Uh, so the next thing, I, am, I'm, I'm, I don't know that you already know what is OLS, okay? So this is the first step in econometrics. This is an estimator. This is an approach to get the, the estimate, to answer the question of how much, okay? <clears throat> So there are many different estimators and uh, we will always discuss the properties of these estimators. So the next thing that I will assume from now on that you know is the properties of estimator, of a good estimator, which are basically consistency and unbiased estimator as well an efficient estimator, okay? So does anyone know what, what consistency, what unbiased means? If not, let me explain, okay? So <clears throat> these are the things that we will use in order to see whether an estimator is a good one or not, okay? So to first of all, understand what, what, what is estimator, what we are doing, let's imagine we have a population, okay? So we have a population of data, but we will never have an access to through all this population, okay? So let's assume we want to estimate the impact of income on our uh, weekly expend expenditure on food, so ideally, we would like to take the data of all people in the world, but this is never possible, okay? So we may just take a sample of this small group. Let's say, take the information from us, okay? So this would be called sample, and we will use our econometrics knowledge in this sample, using this sample, and we'll estimate some parameters, which will show the relationship between the income and expenditures. Then we will apply this to the, to the population relationships, okay? So now, whether our estimation is good or not, it depends whether it's consistent or unbiased or it's efficient, okay? Consistency and unbiasedness, uh, they show the similar concept, okay? They show whether our estimate of the, of the parameter uh, showing the impact of, let's say, in this case of income on expenditure is equal to the true population parameter, okay? Whether what we do is correct or not, okay? So the difference between them is, is, is in a sample size. <clears throat> Unbiasedness means that uh, uh, expected value of our estimator is equal to the true population parameter, okay? And this is applied for a small sample size. And consistency is the same thing. It means that uh, the probability limit of our estimator goes to the true population parameter. So in a simple language, what we estimate is correct. Okay, it's, it's, it's equal to the true population parameter. Here I use the concepts of small sample and, and large sample, okay? The difference between them is not in, in, a, in a size, the difference in, is in uh, how, when the assumptions hold or not, okay? So the small sample, uh, by the way, size of the sample is the number of, of, the, of your data. Let's say if you are in this group, and I don't know how many people are here, let's say 50, so the sample size in this group will be 50, okay? Uh, uh, so in the small sample size case, the, all our uh, assumptions, for, uh, that all our uh, conclusions on this estimator will hold irrelevant of the, uh, of, of the sample size, okay? So it holds for any sample size. This is, uh, this is what we will refer as a small sample, okay? A large sample means that all our properties of, of the estimator hold when the sample size goes to infinity, when we use all possible uh, numbers of, of observations, okay? So this is the concept of consistency and unbiasedness, and we will, it will show whether our estimator is good enough, whether in expectation or whether in probability limit, the, estimate, uh, the estimator goes to the true population parameter. Is this clear? If not, let me know, because from now on, I will assume you know it perfectly. Okay, now about the efficiency. Assume you have two different estimators, okay, and you want to compare them, okay, which one you will use. So for this reason, uh, there, is a, there is a property called efficiency that you will use the most efficient one. 
Efficiency means that it has a smaller uncertainty, okay? It has a smaller variance. So uh, let's say estimator one is more efficient than estimator two if estimator one gi uh, gives a smaller uncertainty, okay? So let's say you estimate the impact of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the, your income on consumption. Uh, estimator one says it's, uh, let's say, one dollar increase in, in your uh, income will increase your consumption from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 dollars. And the second estimator says it will change from 0 0.6 from 0 0.7. You see, the second estimator gives a smaller range. It's more certain, it's more, uh, it has a smaller variance. So you will for sure use the second estimator because it's, it's, it, it, it has a less uncertainty, okay? So this is the property of efficiency which from now on, I assume you know, okay? Uh, well, that's it for now on. Uh, so I, I assume you understand what is estimator, what is estimate, what is consistent estimator, what is unbiased estimator, efficient estimator, okay? So if, again, if something is not clear, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I assume that uh, you know, okay? So let me move on now. So uh, what we will do, first we will have a brief introduction of panel data, what is panel data, how it looks like, okay? Why we use panel data. Then we will discuss the basic panel data models, which are pooled OLS, random effects, fixed effects, first difference model. So today we will discuss four different estimators, okay? So this, again, estimator is a tool, is, it's a formula that we will put the data in this estimator and get the, the measurement. Of, of the relationship between the variables, okay? So today we will discuss four different estimators. And, and the, at the end of the class, uh, we will uh, discuss how, which one to choose depending on, on the data, depending on the purpose, okay? So today we will have only theory. Next class, uh, when we will start working in Stata, we will discuss all these models in, in your real data, okay? So let's start. First of all, what is panel data? Panel data is also called longitudinal data, okay? And it has uh, two, 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 two uh, dimensions, okay? So it has a cross-sectional dimension and time dimension. So let's again return back to our example of impact of income on the consumption, okay? So let's say we are in this group, 50 people, okay? So if you take today's data of, uh, and collect and ask every one of us, how much you earn and how much expenditure you do on, on your food weekly, okay? Just, just the numbers for today from all 50 people here, then this will be a cross-section on that, okay? So it's a, it's a, it's a data on the cross-section of, of individuals of this group, okay? But uh, if I would take just my income, let's say my income during the last 10 years and my expenditure on food during the last year, 10 years, just for me, and try to analyze whether uh, my income impact of my, in, how much is my in, uh, impact of my income on my consumption, this will be time series analysis, okay? Usually time series analysis is applied in macro data. For example, you may uh, be interested in estimating the impact of interest rates in a GDP of earning or GDP of US, okay? Or the impact of interest rate on a inflation rate, okay? Uh, or maybe the same example of consumption and income, but just Armenia, okay, for the historic, okay? And micro data is usually used for, for uh, uh, sorry, uh, cross-section analysis is usually used for a micro analysis, okay? When you have information on group of individuals, okay? So now, what is panel data? Panel data is the combination of the two, okay? You observe group of people or group of individuals over time, okay? So you see it, it combines these two, two big groups of analysis. So basically it has two dimensions. First is cross-sectional dimension, which could be individuals, households, firms, countries, cities, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And we will use indexing of I, okay? From now on, when you see I, this means that individual one. For example, I for me will be, let's say 10 in this group. Okay, so it's the index of individual, index of a household, of a country, and so on and so forth. And it goes from one to n, small n, and this small n is the number of individuals in the group, okay? In this case, it's a 50, okay? And panel data has the second dimension, which is the time series dimension, okay? 
And it could be days, it could be weeks, months, quarters, uh, years, and so on and so forth, okay? And from now on, I will index them with a small letter T, okay? So T means today, tomorrow, next day, in 10 days, or this quarter, next quarter, et cetera, et cetera. And this cap T is the maximum number of periods that we have in our data, okay? Let's say if it's a yearly data, we have 10 years, then 10 T, cap T will be 10, okay? So this type of indexation is very common in econometrics and in many textbooks, you will find I and T, okay? Yes, any question? Uh, yeah. Yes, okay, it's, it's not a problem because uh, let's say if it's a uh, B monthly data, as you said, okay, mm -hmm. so first period can be the first period of, uh, of, let's say, January of 2022. Second will be second uh, part of the month of January 2022. If it's a quarter, it's easier. There are only four quarters in each year. So quarter one of 2022, quarter two of 2022, and so on and so forth. Okay. You just need, uh, I will show next uh, an example of a panel data, so it will be more obvious. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Great. Well, so this is this is the dimension of the panel data, okay? And as I said, we will study basic models, more advanced models, and we will have uh, some practical work in data, okay? Uh, let's move on. And here, as I promised, I am showing you an example of a panel data, okay? In uh, in uh, in let's say in the data. So this is this should be the perfect form of the data that you need to give data in order to do the analysis, okay? If your data is in any other form, you need to bring it to this form, okay? So let's understand. And this is the real world data. It shows the democracy rate. This is taken from this paper by, by Spielenbergo. In this paper, the author tries to understand what is the impact of the number of students going to the, the foreign countries, okay? What is the impact of the number of students going to foreign countries, which are democratic or autocratic on the democracy of your own country, okay? So uh, the idea is that if you have, in, let's say from Armenia, many students going to, to study in US and European countries, then this will affect on a democracy on this country, on Armenia, okay? So this is the data. So first thing that you need to have in the panel data is column one should be the index of your individuals, okay? In this case, we have a countries. So you see that we have Argentina, we have Armenia, and we have Australia, okay? So it should show which countries you have, which individuals you have. If you will work on individuals, instead of Argentina will be my name and the name of the other students here and so on and so forth, okay? And this is a country level data. So we have Argentina, Armenia, and Australia. This is yearly data. So the next variable that you need to know is a time index, okay? And in this case, this is a year. And you should put in this way. So first it should come the data of Argentina, okay? And you see, sorry, this is not yearly. This is five year uh, gap then, okay? So you have 1985, 1919, 1995, 2000, okay? So you see, first comes the data of Argentina of each period. Then next comes Armenia of each period. And then next comes Australia of each period, okay? So you should have your data organized in this way in, 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 a, in a stata, for example, in order to do your analysis, okay? So this is the perfect form of doing a panel data. Next comes your, your variables. For example, this will be our dependent variable, which is the democracy of the domestic country. This is the number of students, and this is the democracy of host countries. By the way, if you see these numbers, uh, the, uh, looks strange. This is not a number. This is an index which goes from zero to one. One means that all students abroad are in a democratic country, and zero means that they are in a dictatorial country. Okay. So in Armenian case, we have quite high numbers actually uh, the, compared to the others. Okay. So Armenian students go to the democratic countries. So this is the example of our data. If you have any question here, perfect. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> now let's think about uh, the types of the panel data, okay? 
So uh, first, the differentiation between panel data is it could be balanced data or unbalanced data. Okay, so balanced means that all individuals are observed for all the periods. Okay, and balanced means that you lose some of these individuals. You do not observe, let's say, all the countries for all the periods. Okay, so uh, and when you do the analysis, depending on how much is unbalanced your data, your applied approaches, your uh, results may be significantly affected. So you should be careful when you have unbalanced data. Ideally, you would like to have a balanced data. So you would like to have all individuals of all periods. But if the, your data doesn't allow you this, if your the sum of part, some parts of your data is lost, uh, you, need, you need to be a little bit careful. Okay, if uh, why this is lost. If, for example, if you are analyzing the, if, uh, the, the firm data and some of the firms just disappear because they are bankrupt. So this is important. In this case, you cannot just ignore this unbalanced nature of this data. So you should be careful when you work in the practice. So now, can you tell me this, uh, going back to this example, is it a balanced data or unbalanced? It's unbalanced because we don't have observations for Armenia for two periods. Perfect, perfect. Yes, we don't have because in 1985 there was no uh, independent Armenia. Okay, so this is the reason why we don't have. Okay, so we should know why why we lose some some counts. Okay, perfect. So let's move on. Second way of differentiation between the panel panel data is depending on uh, the size of the dimensions. Okay. So first of all, it could be long and narrow. Long and narrow means that T, the time dimension, goes to infinity. So it's a long, it goes to infinity. And narrow means that the number of N, number of individuals in the panel data is fixed, okay? So let's say we have 10 people and history of 10 people for let's say uh, 1,000 uh, periods, okay? Uh, the second option is short and wide, which is the reverse actually means that uh, time is fixed, the number of time periods is fixed, it's not that big, and the number of individuals in the data goes to infinity, okay? Third option is long and wide, so the both dimension goes to infinity. O obviously, there could be also the last fourth dimension, which is, let's say, short and narrow, which means that the both dimensions are, are very small, but this is obviously not the interesting case. You cannot do analysis with this type of data, okay? So for our models, for the discussion we will have, we will assume we have a short and wide data. We will assume that we have only few periods, fixed time periods, and our sample size of the individuals cross-sectional dimension goes to infinity, okay? So why we use this type of models, basic in, in general, because this third way, the third option is, is, is very rare that we will have. It's very unbelievable that you will get a data which has both dimensions going to infinity. And in this case, this is also not interesting for our case because in this case means you have few people or few countries for a very long period, then you will go and just do time series analysis. And you will not do panel data because the benefits of the panel data is not, is not applied here, okay? So this is how we differentiate in general the, between the panel data, okay? And keep in mind, we will assume from now on that we have short and wide data. So fixed T going and N going to it. It's clear, yes? Perfect. Okay, perfect. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, next question is why actually we need panel data, okay? Why we should uh, just uh, make our life a little bit more difficult, collect this panel data, because obviously it's more difficult to collect the panel data. So why we need it, okay? By the way, I forgot to ask, endogeneity is another thing I assume you know, okay? Uh, if you don't know, let me explain. In econometric analysis, uh, this is the most important assumption uh, that you should not have endogeneity issue. Because if you have endogeneity issue and you, know, you do not address it, then you will have inconsistent and biased estimation, which you already know what means. So this means that you estimate the parameters which do not go to the true true parameter bias. So you, you do estimation, but which is not correct, okay? So basically you can understand if you have endogeneity issue and if you bring me a model and say me, okay, this is my model, but I have endogeneity issue, I will never look at that model because that's what you what you have it, it's, it's not correct, okay? 
So this is the endogeneity, uh, which basically means that your error terms of your model are correlated with x's, okay? So endogeneity means errors are correlated with x's, with your explanatory factors, okay? So this should not be the case. Now, one of the good things of using, one of the benefits of using panel data that partially this issue is addressed. Some part of this issue is addressed. So when it is addressed is when you have unobserved, in, uh, unobserved characteristics and you don't uh, know the data of this and you omit. And uh, by the way, before going there, I should explain that in, in econometric models, when you omit important axes, okay, when you don't control important factors, you will get endogeneity issues because of omitted variable bias, okay? So when, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in our example, I want to estimate the impact of income on, uh, or let's say, uh, expenditures. And I know that, let's say, uh, my uh, age, for example, is an important factor because, let's say, uh, kids do not eat much, uh, old people do not eat much. But I know that age is important and I do not control age, I omit age. And I know that age is correlated with the, uh, uh, with the income, then omitting this important factor age will generate a bias because of endogeneity issue. It will be biased estimation, okay? So, uh, and there are many other characteristics. For the age case, it's easy to control, okay? You can collect data of age, but what about, let's say, taste, okay? We don't know how to measure taste, okay? So these are some individual characteristics of taste which, which we cannot measure, okay? So, uh, and omitting this, this type of characteristics in cross-sectional analysis will generate a bias, okay? In the case of panel data, if you have these unobserved characteristics, unobserved individual effects, by individual unobserved effects, I mean, like say, difference between, let's say, people in this group, okay? So we don't, there are some differences, uh, but we don't observe the data, okay? So if we have a characteristics like this, we don't have control it in the model, but these characteristics are fixed over time. So these do not change uh, during the time. I have my characteristics over time the same. Some of you, let's say, Allah have, has her characteristics over time uh, the same, fixed, it's fixed. Then with the panel data, this problem, this endogeneity coming from these unobserved individual characteristics that are fixed over time, it will be addressed. Okay, so is this clear? May I ask a question? Sure. Uh, does it mean like uh, it's correlated, error is correlated with X, that with bigger Xs, the errors are getting bigger or it doesn't it matter? Yeah, a correlation means it's not necessarily bigger, with bigger goes bigger, it's not necessarily a positive correlation. Any type of correlation generates a genetic issue, okay? <laughs> So it means, uh, what is error action? Error is some idiosyncratic component. You never know what is it, okay? It's, it's some disturbances, okay? But if it's correlated, it means that in an error, you have, uh, you have left something which is, like which is changing for four x's, okay? <laughs> you, say you, you do bigger errors uh, for, for, for girls, uh, for females compared to the males. This should not be the case. It should, your error should not be correlated with the gender, for example. Oh. Okay. Okay. Any other question? If not, let's move on. So this was the first biggest uh, benefit of using panel data and moving from cross-sectional to, to the panel data. And the second thing is about the dynamics. So let's imagine the, uh, the, the same example, impact of the uh, monthly income on, on weekly consumption of food in this group, okay? So if we just, take the data of this today's data only for one period okay, and do cross-sectional analysis, probably will you do some mistakes because there are habits. Let's say I drink a lot of coffee today and probably I will drink a lot of coffee tomorrow, next day, because this is my habit. I drink a lot of coffee, okay? So, uh, so my today's consumption of coffee affects my tomorrow's consumption of coffee. Okay, so there is this dynamic effect. There is the link of today's value on tomorrow's value. Okay, so in cross-sectional, we cannot control these habits. Okay, we cannot control the dynamics. But in the panel data, we have individuals cross-section 
over time so we can control the dynamics. And this is what we will do in during the next class, okay? So these are the two biggest benefits of the panel data. It addresses partially, not fully, partially endogeneity issue coming from those and making of those unobserved individual characteristics that are fixed over time, okay? And it allows you to include the dynamics in a cross-sectional analysis. Okay, uh, if you don't have any question, let me move on. And in this slide, before going to our models, I show you how we do define uh, the, the, the panel data, okay? In, 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 the, in the rest of the slides. And as, uh, as you have seen in a data of the democracy, it's in the same way. So let me just tell that uh, from now on, whenever you see a bold letter, it means that it is a vector or a matrix, okay? When you will see a letter like this, this is just one number, okay? When you see capital letter, it's a matrix. When you see small letter, it's a vector, okay? So here, for example, this is our dependent model. By the way, I will define always dependent with Y and my all explanatory factors I will define with X, okay? So let's start here. Let's uh, think about our dependent variable. So first of all, let's look in this way, which is the open way. So you have the data, first individual, first period. Let's say Argentina, 1985, Argentina, 1919, Argentina, 1995, and so on and so forth. The second, individual is Armenia, the third one is Australia, and so on and so forth, okay? You should have indexes of individual and period, okay? Going one from another, okay? So you can instead define it in a vector way. So if you write, let's say, both letter Y and one, and this will be just the vector of data for Argentina, then vector of data for Armenia, and so on and so forth. Or you can just even define it just with one bold letter, which will mean that it's just a vector, okay? Of, of the dependent variable, okay? Similarly for the control variables, just with the one difference that we don't have just one control variable, we have many control variables, okay? As we have seen, we have democracy in the host country, we have a number of students going to the host country, maybe we can control for GDP of domestic country and host country and so on and so forth, okay? So you have here different columns of each variable here. And one of them will be our constant, which will be ones, okay? You will put one everywhere. And you can, in a similar way, define with the, with the bold letters or unknown in this way. Is this clear? Okay. Perfect. We are done with our introduction. Now let's uh, start uh, thinking of the models of the estimators to work with the panel data. Okay, what we can do first, you have passed the OLS, yes? In the first lecture, I think you know what is OLS. Can anyone tell me what is OLS? Well, let me tell, OLS is the simplest possible approach estimator that we have in econometrics. And when you start econometrics, you start from OLS, okay? OLS means that it's an estimator uh, which minimizes the least of sum of square, least uh, it's a sum of square of the residuals, okay? So you, you have, uh, uh, let's say, a set of different uh, parameters, okay? You have different sets and you just pick the one that gives you smallest possible errors, okay? Of the, of the prediction, okay? So it's, a, it's called uh, ordinary least square. So it minimizes the sum of squares and chooses the parameters in a way that, that minimizes this sum of squares, okay? So this is OLS, okay? So this is the simplest possible estimator that we can apply. And by the way, if the assumptions of OLS hold, then it's, it's the best way to do it. Uh, it's the best uh, unbiased estimator, okay? If it's assumptions hold, okay? So if all the assumptions of OLS hold, you don't need to go anywhere else and you can just apply with uh, OLS and, and do your analysis with OLS. But in practice, of course, this is not, not always possible. So what we can, can do in the panel data first, we can just ignore that this is a panel, okay? We can ignore that there, there is individual characteristics which we do not observe, okay? And just pull everything together, or the data of all people we can just pull together and apply OLS. Okay, so this is the first and simplest thing that we can do. If we can do this, then if the assumptions of OLS hold, then we can easily do this and we can, we can uh, get the most efficient way, if the assumptions hold, okay? 
So uh, that, uh, here I have the definition of, of my model. I have the dependent variable. I have a constant alpha here. I have a vector of, of uh, control variables with corresponding uh, vector of parameters. And UIT is my error terms, my idiosyncratic shocks, OK? And you see, I always have I and T, OK? I means individual one, or individual I. T means period, OK? Uh, and uh, in uh, OLS uh, uh, applied to panel data, is, is called pooled OLS, okay? So we will define it by POLS, okay? So the, the simplest possible approach OLS applied to panel data is called pooled OLS. And I, again, you can, uh, you can always use it if the assumptions of OLS hold, okay? If assumptions are perfect, this is the easiest thing to do and this is the most efficient thing to do, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, and, 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 and I want to mention that OLS sometimes is called Okay, I think we are back. Yeah, can I continue? Uh -huh. Okay, so let me continue. So what we have done so far is, is uh, the first approach, the simplest approach is pooled OLS, which is basically OLS applied to the pattern data, okay? And as I said, use OLS. Now let's think about the assumption of OLS. If you have studied OLS in your first class, then you should know, uh, you should recognize these assumptions, which are basically the same, okay? I want to mention that here I uh, group them into three groups of assumption, but in different textbooks, you may see four assumptions, five assumptions, but it's, it's, it doesn't matter, okay? Some textbooks uh, just combine them, some give another name, okay? Uh, and and uh, that doesn't matter. It's more important the essence of the assumption. So let's start. The first assumption, OLS1, pooled OLS1, is the most important assumption that we already speak about. This is the exogeneity assumption. Okay? As I said, the error terms should not be correlated with our axis. Okay? So this is strict uh, exogeneity assumption in this case. So you see expected value of xt and ut is zero. They are not correlated. And here I use the word strict because there are two different ways of exogeneity. One is the strict exogeneity assumption that we will assume for all today's lecture. And then in the next lecture, we will relax a little bit and we'll discuss another option of exogeneity. So let's understand what the strict exogeneity means. It means that uh, uh, error terms are not correlated with the current axis with the past axis and also with the future axis, okay? So it, it's not correlated for any period, okay? Is this clear for the strict exogeneity assumption? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's clear. Okay, so because for the rest of the uh, other estimators, this assumption will be basic for today's, for today's estimator, this assumption will be the same, okay? We always first assume that we have a strict exogeneity assumption. And when we violate this assumption, we are go going to have a very, very serious problems, okay? Second assumption is called, in this case, I call it a full rank assumption or linearly independent regressors. In many textbooks, you may have read, let's say uh, another word, which is no perfect collinearity assumption, okay? If you don't know what is it, let me explain in simple words. It says that you are not allowed to include in your model two different axes which are perfectly collinear, okay? Let's say you, are, you cannot include in your model, uh, let's say your monthly income, salary income, your other incomes, maybe you have some uh, uh, deposits or you have relatives who send you money and, you, uh, and the, they are some which we call total income. You cannot have all these three in, in one regression model. You, it's not possible to include uh, monthly income, uh, salary income, other income and total income because total income is a perfect combination of the two. There is a perfect uh, collinearity, okay? This is not possible. 
So you need uh, to have uh, to have this uh, assumption of no perfect collinearity, which is in mathematical form means that the rank of x prime x matrix is 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 equal to k. K is a now here is the number of uh, axes we have. If you have a ten axes, then the rank of this x prime x matrix should be equal to ten. Okay. So this means that x is a full column rank. Okay. Uh, uh, I hope you know what are matrices and you know how to work with the matrices. Is this assumption clear? This full column rank assumption? Yes. Perfect. <clears throat> and uh, our third assumption, which in many textbooks is split it into two parts, okay? But here I combine them. So what it says, it's about the error terms, okay? So first thing it says that uh, the variance of our residuals error terms is constant, okay? So this conditional and unconditional variance is constant. What does it mean? It means that you have the same uncertainty for all the x's, okay? Uh, this is, uh, maybe you have heard this term in, this is the no, uh, no heteroscedasticity assumption. So you assume that the error terms are homoscedastic, okay? So, an example of its violation we will make it clear. So let's say we have a, here a people who have different income, okay? And we want to estimate the impact of income on the consumption. Let's say we have a group of four people in this group uh, who get, let's say $500 per month. And we have also uh, very rich people in this group who get, let's say $100,000 a month, okay? I hopefully there are some people here. So. Uh, and we want to analyze the impact of income on the consumption in this group. There are poor people, there are rich people, okay? So look at the poor people. They don't have much choice. They they're more or less will spend uh, the same thing. They will do the same amount of spending on consumption, okay? Because they don't have much choice. But now look at the rich people. There could be some people who, who still do not spend much on the consumption. But there could be people who just every day go to the fancy restaurants or, or, or buy very, very expensive things. So if you look in the rich people group, the variance will be very high, okay? So the, 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 the distribution between the uh, consumption of very rich people is very big. But for the poor people, it's, it's, it's very, very small. The variance is very small. So you have a very small uncertainty for uh, poor people and very big uncertainty of, of, uh, of rich people, which means that the variance is not constant. It depends on excess, okay? So this is a clear violation of uh, uh, constant variance assumption or homoscedasticity assumption. So in our OLS, we assume that this is not the case. The variance is not changing with excess, okay? Is this clear? Perfect. And second part is about serial correlation, okay? Serial correlation means that the error terms are correlated over time. So there is a memory in your data, okay? If you do mistakes today, it affects on tomorrow's values, okay? Your errors today affects tomorrow's errors, okay? So this is a violation of no serial correlation assumption. <clears throat> so we assume that uh, error terms are, uh, the variance of error terms are constant. They do not depend on axis and they, they are not serially correlated, okay? Is this, is this clear, the assumption three? I hope so. So let's repeat the assumption and move on. So we have strict exogeneity assumption, we have full column rank assumption, and we have error terms uh, do not have uh, constant, have constant violence are, and are not serially correlated, okay. So now, again, if these assumptions hold, if you can prove that all these assumptions hold in your OLS, you don't need to worry anymore about any other models and you should apply your full OLS, which is basically OLS on a, on a panel data, okay? If this holds, then perfect, okay? Now about, uh, about the OLS estimator. Uh, uh, so uh, this, if you study econometrics, you for sure need to learn by heart this, is, this formula, okay? And this is OLS estimator. So look, it's X prime X inverse X prime Y. What does it mean? Uh, it's, it's, it's the formula that we can get uh, if we try to minimize the sum of squared residuals, okay? You should learn this by heart. You should uh, recognize this formula. So you see, this is an estimator. We, we can collect data on X and Y. We can put it here, okay? 
we can put it here in this estimator and get the estimates of beta, okay? So this is the pooled OLS estimator. So if assumptions hold, we can use this formula and get the parameters, okay? And we can prove that uh, uh, this OLS estimator is both consistent and uh, asymptotically normally distributed. Now you see a lot of formulas. Let me explain how we prove it. This, is, this will, I think this will be my only proof here. The rest will be similar, okay? So uh, consistency, as I said, it means that uh, my estimator of OLS, my parameter estimates in probability limit goes to the true population parameters. So this beta is a true population parameters, okay? So if I can prove that in probability limit, my beta OLS, pooled OLS goes to the true, equals to the true population parameters, this means that my OLS, my pooled OLS is consistent estimate. Okay, so I can perfectly use that. Okay, so <clears throat> let me very, very briefly explain how you do this proof. And for the rest, it will be similar. And for those who are interested, can just read it later. Okay, so the proof is super simple. Uh, here you have uh, the, the formula for, for the OLS estimator. Okay, if you replace this y with its expression, okay, instead of y, you can write uh, x times beta plus r of x. Okay. Instead of y, you just write its expression, okay? X times beta uh, plus error times. And now you can open this parenthesis. So you will have x prime x inverse, x prime x times beta. So uh, a matrix multiplied by its inverse is just identity matrix. It's, it's the same like 10 times one over 10, just one, okay? So in the first term, we will have just the beta because x prime x inverse x prime x is just identity matrix. So you will get beta here. And for second case, we can just write in this way, x prime is the inverse times x prime u. Okay, is it clear up to now? How I get this part? If not, let me know because this is important. Yes. Okay, again. Uh, like uh, y, y expression and get and change uh, x and come beta, gumara zero, y expression. Y for x and come beta, gumara zero, ubat sume. Is unek matrix x prime x, unek matrix x prime x inverse. I think that matrix a bazo patata ira inverso. I think that or not make and come make a bazo, not as in make up. Unek beta, as beta and galsa tates. SL Yekros Petorna were watching one chamber, X prime X inverse, X prime one. Upaza Pasi and the relevant probability limit. Probability limit her, Havana Kanutsuna to Ur Gena in Chicken Zikti vectors, yet sample sizes, if N goes to Okay? So now let's let's look at this part. Let's look at this part. Now we, here we need to use our assumptions. Okay? Let's first look at this guy, X prime X inverse. X prime X is just the numbers. These are data, okay? We, uh, these are data that we observe. So it exists. So X prime X goes to some, some matrix. In, when N goes to infinity, it goes to some finite matrix, okay? Because this is the data. It goes to some, some matrix, okay? Then I have said here that we have a full column rank, okay? So you can, uh, you can be sure that when you have a full column rank, then uh, if a matrix has a, a full column rank, it is invertible. So this means that if this x prime x has a full column rank, then its inverse will also exist. So the whole thing will go to some finite matrix. Okay. So this term goes to something finite. Okay. Is this clear? Next, look look at here. Who is this guy? Can, can anyone tell me? Uh, uh, this goes to zero. But can can anyone tell me which assumption I used to prove that it goes to zero? Probability limit gnuma x prime u. Uh huh. Is x prime u zero? Here x prime u expected value of x prime u zero. Ah, but if the error never pops up, because we have an assumption on it. Ah, one assumption. Strict exogeneity assumption. Assumption number one. Okay. So this is this now you can see why we do the assumptions, okay? So by, by using our full column rank assumption and our strict exogeneity assumption, this goes to zero, this goes to finite matrix, and 
uh, there is a theorem called Slatsky theorem. If one matrix goes to infinity, another one goes to, to, to zero in probability limits, then their product goes to zero, okay? So this whole term goes to zero when n goes to infinity, okay? So I could prove that this goes to this. This means that my estimator gives something which in probability limit, when you increase the sample size, goes to true population parameters, okay? So I have a consistent estimators, okay? Is the proof clear how I did the proof? It's, it's very simple, okay? Because for the rest of the class, uh, uh, the proofs will be the same and I will skip them, okay? That's, uh, and the next thing is about the distribution. Uh, it's again, uh, you can do the same uh, proof here just by replacing instead of y, it's uh, x, x times beta plus u. And here you need to use the fact that x prime u, if you rescale it by one over square root of n, then this term will go to the uh, to the normal distribution, okay? So it means zero and the variance so equals to the variance of this guy, sigma square. And you can prove this. I don't want to prove it. I just want to explain it to you. So what does it mean? It means that my OLS estimator beta, okay, uh, is also it is not only consistent. So it goes in the probability limit to beta. So it's uh, it also is normally distributed. Okay, its mean value is the true population beta. Okay, so OLS goes to the true population beta and it has a variance of given this. Okay, and by the way, this, this formula of OLS variance is the second thing you need to learn by heart. You know, you need to know it. Okay, you need to know this one OLS estimator and the formula of OLS estimator uh, va variance, which is basically sigma square U is the variance of our residuals and X prime X inverse divided by, by my axis, okay? Is this clear? So I proved that pooled OLS applied to the panel data is a consistent estimator. So it gives, it gives you correct results, correct estimates, and which goes in probability limit to the true population parameters. I also proved that it has this variance. I don't have the proof here, but it can be proved that this variance is the minimum of all collinear models, okay, linear and biased models. So you can say that this OLS is also the most efficient one in the group of linear models, which are unbiased, okay. So this means that this is best unbiased uh, consistent estimator. So you need always to use cooled OLS if the assumptions hold, okay. Now, remember what I said with the OLS. Uh, I said that it's it's the very good approach. It's very simple approach. But in this case, we uh, assume that there is no individual heterogeneity. Okay. I say that uh, individual characteristics that we do not observe are not important because I ignore them. Okay. But is it is it uh, true in the reality? In practice, many many cases no. Okay. So if you just do this assumption, you are probably going to be uh, to, to, to have a biased estimation because individual characteristics in the, in the panel data, individual heterogeneity are important, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> so this means that with the, uh, in, uh, omitting this in, or ignoring this individual heterogeneity in, in, in your uh, panel data models, in your panel data models, you will generate omitted variable bias and this strict exogeneity assumption will be violated and you are not able to get consistent estimator, okay? So in practice, it's very rare that this individual heterogeneity is not important, okay? It's very rare. So you are probably going to do a mistake, okay? And second issue is that it's, it's again, very unlikely that this homoscedasticity and no serial correlation assumptions will hold, okay? It's, it's almost unbelievable to, to, to have these assumptions hold. Uh, the second problem is not that big problem. You can easily, solve it by applying, let's say, robust standard errors or by applying approaches, let's say GLS, which I hope you know, uh, which is generalized least square, trying to address these issues, okay? So you can apply these type of models uh, in, in, uh, in, um, uh, in case of, of this heteroscedastic and serially correlated error. But still, this, this first problem of, of ignoring the individual heterogeneity, it's not possible to to, to solve in a OLS, okay? So the conclusion here is the following. OLS is good, OLS is very easy. Uh, OLS gives you very efficient way of estimation if its assumptions hold, but probably these assumptions do not hold, okay?
okay? So you need to think a little bit harder in order to control for this individual heterogeneity, okay? So we have a panel data and each person of this panel has some individual characteristics which we do not observe. Uh, if we ignore this, this is going to, to generate a problem, okay? This is going to create the biased estimation, okay? Uh, so this was our Puldo LS. Now for the next group of models, I will try to address the problem of OLS. I will try to control this individual heterogeneity. Okay, so is, is the plan clear what you're going to do? Any, any questions so far? Because we are trying to move on to the next, next section. Okay, perfect. So uh, we will start now two group of models, random effects and fixed effects. So now let's, first of all, a little bit definition. Uh, this is our model. Again, we have a dependent variable Y uh, for individual I period T. We have uh, our control variables X, beta. We have our idiosyncratic shocks. And in red, we have CI. This CI is this unobserved individual characteristics I was speaking so far. And you see it's an I, there is no T, it's fixed over time, okay? These are, let's say, characteristics of each person in this group, which we don't know, but we know that it is important, okay? So this CI was the problem that we, uh, we omitted this CI in, uh, in, in our OLS, and this was generating a problem, this CI, because we know that it's important. Now let's think how we can control for this CI, okay? So this CI is this unobserved effect or called latent effect, okay? So these are some individual characteristics which we are going to control some. Uh, the next two groups of models uh, will uh, differentiate, will be differentiated based on the assumption on this CI. So if we assume that CI are not correlated with X's, okay? These unobserved characteristics are not correlated with observed characteristics. Let's say, my taste is not correlated with my age. Age, I can observe. Taste, I cannot observe. But this is not correct, yeah, actually. If I can assume that they are not correlated, then I can use uh, this random effects, random effects assumption. What we can do in that case? Uh, uh, in that case, we can uh, treat this CI as a random variable, okay? We can omit it and combine with the error term, okay? And uh, in case uh, you omit some important variable, which is not correlated with the included axis, it doesn't generate any problem, okay? So if I can assume that CI is not correlated with axis, okay? If I can assume that, then I can just combine CI with my idiosyncratic shows and estimate my model, okay? Because in that case, CI is not correlated with axis. There is no problem. Is this correct, uh, clear? Okay, so uh, this, this is something called random effect assumption because we treat this CI as a random variable, okay? We assume it's a random variable and we combine with the idiosyncratic shows, okay? <clears throat> but sometimes it's, it's not co correct. Like in age example, my age is probably correlated with my taste, okay? So if I cannot do that assumption that CI is not correlated with axis. So if CI is correlated with axis, uh, I cannot combine CI with UI. It's not possible. If you do this, you will make a, a biased estimation, okay? If this CI is correlated with axis, I cannot omit it, okay? What I can do, I can assume that each individual here is, 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 has its, its average value, okay? And I can try to estimate one number for each individual, one individual characteristic number, let's say one average value for each person. Or I can just create a dummy variable, one, zero. For example, if, if uh, in, in our example, for Armin, if it's Armin, we can put one, and elsewhere we can put zero. Then we can create a dummy for Argentina, a dummy for Australia, and so on. So in this case, we assume that CI is fixed, okay? And we estimate one parameter for CI, okay? So this is a fixed effect assumption. So, so this is how we differentiate between these two models. In one case, we assume CI is not correlated and we assume it's a random, okay? Uh, and we combine it with the error terms. In the second case, we assume CI is correlated with axis and we, we assume it's a fixed and we estimate a fixed effect, okay? We estimate one parameter for the CI. I, I want to be sure that this is clear for everyone because this is going to be the call for the rest. Is it clear? 
these two assumptions, how we differentiate. If not, let me know because I can try to uh, explain a little bit more. Sure, person. Okay, perfect. Now let's uh, start with this assumption, with the random effects assumption, okay? So next model will be called random effects estimator with this assumption, okay? So now let's uh, quickly go through the assumptions. I will be clear, uh, more quicker here, okay? So first assumption is the same, is a strict exogeneity assumption. Error terms are not correlated with axis. Also, they are not correlated with this unobserved effect, okay? So the strict exogeneity assumption is still here or a conditional and unconditional mean of the error terms of zero, okay? Uh, here we add a second part of the assumption is that the, the CI are not correlated with axis. We have a random effect assumption, okay? Assumption number two is the same. We have a full column rank equal to K. And assumption number three is almost the same. We have again, no serial correlation and heteroscedastic, uh, no heteroscedastic assumption. But on top of that, we also need to assume uh, about the variance of CI, CI, okay? Because we treat CI as a random variable, it has a variance. So we need to do assumption that this variance of CI, okay, conditional and conditional variance is, is also fixed. It's also one number, okay? The CI is not changing uh, across, across the axis, okay? So we assume that uh, now we have, uh, look, we have two variances, variance of our idiosyncratic shocks and variance of my, uh, my CI, my unobserved effect. Okay, is this clear? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just let's uh, to summarize. Uh, variance of the idiosyncratic shocks. It's it's a sigma square u uh, uh, according to the uh, homoscedasticity assumption. There is no serial correlation, so uit and you uh, correlation with of uit of uis. So at time t and at time s is zero. There is no serial correlation. There is no memory in the data. It's a zero for T not equal to S. CI is not correlated with UI, okay? It's zero. And the variance of CI is equal to sigma square C. This is what we assumed so far, okay? Now let's look at the variance covariance matrix of our combined error term, okay? Because we combined errors, uh, CI, uh, uh, we add CI to the, our idiosyncratic show, okay, UI. And let's assume we define it by a letter mu, okay? So when you see new, it means that we have combined our idiosyncratic shocks with our unobserved fixed effects, okay? So let's look at the variance when uh, we are looking at the same period, when T is equal to S. So we want to construct variance covariance matrix of our combined error terms. And this, uh, when T is equal to S, this will be the all elements in the diagonal of this matrix, okay? So let's just uh, open it, okay? Here, I will just open the square term and I will use the fact that uh, expectation of the sum is sum of the expectation, okay? So I can interchange summation and expectation and I can get this, okay? I just open the squares here and, and we use this fact. So expected value of CI squared, uh, two times expected value of CI UIT and expected value of UIT squared. This one was sigma square C, okay? This one was sigma square u, and this one was zero, okay? So we will have sigma square c plus sigma square u. So in the variance covariance matrix, everywhere in the diagonals, I will have sigma square c plus sigma square u, okay? Now look at the all diagonal elements when t is not equal to s, okay? Again, I am I'm, I'm opening the definition. So it will be ci plus uit, ci plus uis. And in this case, as CI is uh, not correlated with UIS, uh, with UIT, and also UIT is not correlated with UIS, everywhere else I will have zero and I will have just sigma square C, okay? So wh why I'm doing this, you will see now. So I just look at the, this variance for okay. uh, Do you have any question? Yes, I have a question. Uh, Steph, uh huh. Took Esther by the Kerelek for a year for ten Havasar Che, a seat, Paragon, or may have a certain Havasar Kinis, a roche. But Esther, Mank Ashatelank, ten Havasar, a seat. Who knows it's critic for year who ye, a CIUIT in Kavasar Zeroi. 
Ha, vorte bine, să și mă mălum și aia corelatvaș ce eu ai noi, asta. Asta e, asta e zăr, asta e scăl să stevenți. Ha, ok. Eu sper că vine nicio câte mici mai aici. Da, mersi. Ha, asta e, nu, asta e an observ individual efect pe imagine, da, vor corelatvaș ce eror pe ei. Իսկ ես իդիոսինկրատիկ էրորները ժամանակի մեջ կորելացված չէ։ Նվայ իմ ես ընկի ճարակ գնացիս տեղ, որ ես մատրիկսի ձեզ չուստամ, իրականում ես փորձում եմ ես մատրիկսի էլեմենտները կրտեղ։ � Why I am doing this? Uh, variance covariance matrix in OLS should be uh, should should have everywhere in all diagonals zeros, and in diagonals I should have a constant. So these are serial correlations, and these are the variances in in a combined error terms. Okay. So here I am. I just want you to see already that if I apply OLS to this random effects model, it it will have a problems because. I, I will be I will not have this diagonal diagonal matrix with zeros in all diagonal. So the serial correlation assumption in OLS applied to the random effect model will be violated. Okay. This was the, the purpose of, of, of showing all this. I just wanted to you to see how I proved, okay, how this element comes. Okay. So uh, again, so jumping a little bit ahead, uh, I want to say that. You will have a problems or in a random effects model if you just apply OLS. Okay, uh, and here I I, did, I do it in another definition. Here I is just the identity matrix and J is a matrix with ones everywhere. Identity is when you put one in the diagonal and zero elsewhere. Okay, and if you do the algebra, you will see it's sigma square one uh, times one in the diagonals plus sigma square C, you will get this, and of diagonals here, these are zeros, so you will get sigma square C, okay? So just, uh, just for some notation. Now, uh, uh, let's look at, uh, let's, let's we, we know that this is the variance covariance in the power combined error terms, okay? But let's, for the moment, forget this, okay? And let's uh, say we want to apply OLS, okay, to our random effects model. So let's look at the properties. It's a still consistent and unbiased estimator. The proof goes with the same. Remember, this guy was OLS. This was the OLS estimator. X prime X inverse, X prime Y. You should learn this by heart. X prime X inverse, X prime Y. And the proof is the same. You replace Y with its expression, then you use a full column rank assumption to invert it, and then strict exogenous. The proof is the same. So we can prove that full OLS is consistent. And here I have also unbiased. This unbiased is the same thing, just uh, instead of probability limits, I use the expectations, okay? And uh, uh, remember, unbiasedness is a concept applied to the small sample, and consistency is a concept applied to the big, uh, large sample, okay? So OLS is consistent and unbiased. This is very good, actually. But uh, we have seen this. We have seen this. So if you apply OLS, our estimated variances and our estimated uh, statistical inferences will not be correct. So we cannot apply uh, OLS uh, or OLS to the random effects because we will have a problems. Okay, so we need to think about this. Okay, and the solution is something called GLS. Uh, I don't have time to give you explanation of GLS, but I will give you idea. Uh, GLS is a, one of the approaches to deal with the violation of constant variance and serial correlation assumption. What it does, it says that, for example. Uh, the, the violation comes from the fact that some of the uncertainty is, is different across axes, okay? So what you do actually in, in one of the approaches of GLS, visible GLS, is you, for the observations which have very big variances, you give smaller share. So you, you, you like a weight yourself, okay? And for those observations uh, that have very big variances, you give smaller weight. For those observations that have small variances, you give a, you give bigger weights. In our example of poor and rich people, when you will calculate your OLS estimator with feasible GLS, for the for the rich people, the, you will give the information of the rich people a smaller weight, and the information of the poor people bigger weight because okay. variance here is, is is smaller. Yes. Any question? Okay. 
different. So this is the formula of GLS. So here you see, you just weight it with the inverse of the variance covariance matrix. So it's the OLS, but just the data is weighted with the inverse of the variance covariance matrix. So basically, this GLS estimator applied to the random effect panel data model is something called random effect assumption. Okay. So under the assumptions of random effects, we can approve that it's a consistent, asymptotically normally distributed, uh, has, it has the smallest possible variance, okay? So uh, I'm not going, I don't have time, I think, to go through details. So, uh, so this was the second estimator that we discussed so far, okay? Uh, uh, so just to, to, to uh, repeat, uh, we had the, the assumption that uh, unobserved individual effects are important, okay? And as they are important, we need to somehow control it. And if we can assume that these unobserved individual effects are not correlated with our axis, okay? In this case, we can just apply uh, this feasible GLS on this model and we will get the, 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 the random effects estimate, okay? Is this clear? Okay. Uh, here I have uh, I have few slides about. Uh, so far we assume that sigma square c, sigma square u are given. Okay. Uh, here I have a slides uh, that how to estimate it because it's these are also some population parameters we don't know. We need to estimate it. Okay. So uh, I I will very briefly go uh, how to estimate it. Okay. So we can estimate the combined error because we. We have said that OLS is, is consistent. So we can apply OLS, get the residuals, and get the variance in the combined error. Okay. And we can do a degree of freedom adjustment here to get the variance of the combined error. Uh, we can also get the variance of sigma square C. Remember here, I have sigma square C in all diagonal elements. So what I will do, I will do a trick. I will just take the sum of all these all diagonal elements. Okay. Uh, not these ones, only these ones, okay? I will just take the sum, okay? If I do this sum here, okay, uh, I will have this, uh, and instead I can use my uh, OLS residuals, okay, there, and, and get the sigma square C, okay? And because the sigma square C is not depending on time and S uh, on, on individuals, I can take out, and here I will be left with uh, the sum of first T minus one observations, okay, the integers, sorry. So it's one plus two plus three plus until going T minus one. And you can prove that this is equal to T divided by T minus one over two, okay. So basically this part I can get from uh, my OLS residuals, okay. These are numbers. So from here, I can just get the sigma square C, okay, and do some degree of freedom adjustment and get sigma square C. I was a little bit quick here, but is, was it clear how I do it? I just use the fact that all diagonal elements are sigma square C, and, uh, and by using this fact, I just get the sigma square C by taking the sums. Is this clear? Well, then if I have sigma square U, a new sigma square C, I can easily get sigma square U, which is the difference of the two, okay? This is how I get these variance estimators, okay? Is it clear? Okay, uh, very well. Uh, so, so far I said the following. I said that uh, OLS is the best, is uh, unbiased, is very efficient if it's assumptions hold. okay? If not, we need to think about something. So here I'm going to explain you a very simple test uh, of checking whether the, these unobserved individual effects are important or not, okay? So because if they are not important, then probably we don't need uh, random effects or any other model. And cool OLS is just enough for us, OK? So uh, the, the test is very simple to, to design. OK, think about the sigma square C. It's a variance of this unobserved individual effects. When it is 0, it means that they are all the same. Yeah? There is no value. There is no variation, OK? So if sigma square C is 0, there are no this individual heterogeneity. All the people have the same unobserved characteristics. There is no sense in controlling it. Okay, so so in this case we can just easily do the test, uh, and with the null hypothesis we can put that sigma square c is zero. So there is no individual heterogeneity. And alternatively is that it's not zero. So 
For example, my characteristics and observed characteristics are different from one of you, at least from one of you. Okay, so there are some small variances there. And uh, you probably know how to do the test. You the, the design, design the test statistics. Uh, you, you think about its distribution, okay? And then you compare the statistics with the uh, critical value of the distribution. And if you have a bigger uh, number of the statistics, you reject the number, okay? I don't have time to go deeper on the hypothesis testing, but the idea here is the following. If you reject this null, then it means that, uh, uh, okay, okay, uh, well, uh, it, then it means that uh, uh, an individual heterogeneity are, are, are important and you cannot ignore them. Okay, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Okay, very quick fixed effect, and let's go to the chat. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, skip connect first difference estimate. Okay, fixed effect models. So uh, we said that uh, in uh, when we have important unobserved individual effects, okay, we cannot use OLS. We need to use fixed effects or random effects models. Okay. So the difference we said in a fixed effects uh, in a random effects we assume this unobserved individual effects are not correlated with X's, okay? But imagine, this is very strong assumption, okay? And in practice, you will probably be uh, violated. This assumption will be violated, okay? So that's why we need to think about, uh, uh, about the, the, the more general assumption when you allow your CIs, your unobserved effect to be correlated with X's. So this CI now could be correlated with X's. Notice here, I have a Z. Z are also control variables. Just Zs do not have time index. So, for example, gender is is in in a Z because it's it's not changing over time. Okay. So those variables that are time invariant are not changing over time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in in a fixed effects, uh, again, let's start from the assumption. We have still the strictest uh, exogeneity assumption. We have now fixed effect assumption. We cannot assume CI are not correlated with axes. Okay. Uh, this assumption is a little bit changed that is full column rank. You see K star here. K star is the number of time varying variables. So this is one of the biggest drawback of fixed effect. You can already notice it. You cannot estimate the impact of those variables that do not change over time. So in a panel data, you cannot estimate with fixed effects the impact of gender on consumption, okay? Because Gender is not changing over time. So in a fixed effect estimator, you cannot estimate the, the time invariant variables, okay? So that's why column rank is about the number of time varying variables. And here we have also a, a, a constant variance and no series correlation assumption, which is the same. So what does fixed effect do, okay? We do a transformation of our data and apply OLS on it. So let's look at this transformation. So let's define with the bars, the time average. So here I have the average of each person over time, okay? Uh, uh, y bar is the average of first person, average of second person, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly for X bar, U bar, Z bar, C bar. Notice that Z bar is equal just the Z because it's, it's, it's not changing over time. It's the same number for all periods. Similarly for CI, it's not changing over time. Now let's do some transformation. Let's subtract from each variable its time average, okay? It's, a, it's a average of, 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 of each individual. So, and define it by double dots, okay? It's important to notice here, when we do this, Z will disappear and C will disappear, okay? You see this? CI, this unobserved individual effects, disappear, okay? So this, is, this will give you the idea uh, what the fixed effect does. So if you do this transformation and apply your OLS, okay, let me jump a little bit. Uh, if you do this transformation and apply your OLS, you will not have any problem because these unobserved effects will just disappear, okay? So you can just apply OLS on this transformed data and estimate your model. But unfortunately, the problem is that you cannot also estimate time invariant Zs. Zs will not be estimable as well. Okay, so you cannot estimate this gamma vector here, okay? So, but still, you can get rid of this with this transformation and estimate the vector beta. 
I was a little bit very fast here, but uh, is it clear this what this fixed effect means? What we have done, we did the transformation of our data. We take the av time averages from our observations and apply the OLS on this time average values. Okay, this allows us to get rid of these unobserved effects. Okay, and and apply OLS, which will be the consistent estimate. Okay, here I prove that it's consistent and asymptotically normally distributed. And here I have the slide of uh, of, of 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 how to estimate sigma squared u. Uh, is it clear? This, this is very important. I was a little bit fast, but this is very important. Just a few words. Uh, uh, the, the same fixed effect model can be also estimated. Instead of doing this transformation, we can create a dummy variable for each individual, okay? So we can create a dummy for Armenia, dummy for Argentina, and so on and so forth. Dummy is a zero, one variable. So it's equal to zero if it's a true. So we can create a dummy variables and include in the model, these dummy variables and apply OLS, okay? And we will get exactly the same sort of results as with the fixed effects models, okay? But this is a little bit problematic. Remember I said that our, we assume in our data, T is fixed and N goes to infinity, okay? So when N goes to infinity, this means that we will have infinitely many dummy variables and we have to estimate infinitely many uh, parameters. So in this case, uh, in, in this case, uh, the, the, the adding a new observation doesn't add a new information. So this, this approach is, is not, is not uh, advised to use. And you can use it only when your sample size is small. Uh, okay, I think I am running out of time. I don't know what to do. Uh, maybe next time I will, I will try to go on to the first difference approaches and maybe I can remove some of the models. I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, we have two minutes. Maybe you have, if you have questions, you can give me these questions and we will continue from first difference next time. But into each one, but how are hash training? Prove it. Prove it into each one hash tag. Yet again, it's not car tag. Has that is not prove it. Car connect. And quiz about the same at quiz the hammer. Prove it. Betchi. Pass up as into each one. But as canal, I think an S color approach name into each one. But as canal, if you shot hash quiz on the low, the lectures have to. Yerevi Yavis Makan Kamkanang, yet a hearts in an uncultured tassi, scooping Yerevi made hearts in a good tongue. Okay. Yes, me hearts to them, Uraki, Silanis Tours. Yes, Hetas of the Chinna Manelo, who for Serum has canal, network in each other, Gasmuk, maybe Pokan Seru, Tavana, and two things chop up, and has a make poster, and it in it does the Chinna Manel. Why Kuzman has canal, kind for model, or in each other, yes, Karam Chapel. Chapelit Arsmele Damani, yes, but that's an barrier in the truth of the emoginary in the truth of the interaction in that. But I took a model, a confuncia, or in the truth of the medicine association. Yet Kapemes does he had, yet to Karna Chapek, Hadren Kunenak, Haru and Ked, Idan's data have a keg, who Karna Chapek, Jamanaki Mech. Karak panel data ne dokta konse. Kam karak OLS anel baje depo betha individual effect ne, time fixed effect ne, ta men chhi control ani. Kaise ke M bolor effect ne ne, bola kara asti bola du chunes ko data ani du betha control ani. Or to see endogeneity issue ne chara chuna. Kaise du identification of chis betha kazmas. Yete ekha jamana ki mes check karo ba. Hamar ke barza pes pula inch for kam asing. Eli Panella by some people who neck Tarbet group on it, as you can let Martic check the room, Tarbet group on it. Men, a depum oily oil escaracane, 
բայց թայնք իչ տպեկները պետք է կնտրոլ անեք, ու կնտրոլ անեք բոլոր հնարավոր հոպվականները։ Եթե չեք կա միչվոր հոպվականներ կնտրոլ անել ընդոջիների շուներ դու պետք է փորձեք այդ էքսը ինստրումենտ անել, այստը փորձեք միատ մենց ինստրումենտ կետնել, որը կորելացված է էքսի էդ, բայց կորելացված չի էրովներ։ Եսինքն կախված դատեից, կախված խնդրից, կախված պրոբլեմներից, պետք Հաշնորակալություն շատ։ Ոկե, եթե էլ հարս չկա, կանդպեն հիշապը։ Հաշնորակալություն, հաճանություն։ Հաշնորակալություն։ Հաշնորակալություն։ Հաշնորակալություն